the Premier League was made for me. No, I think at the time, why just uh, him losing his head like always. Managing to win the World Cup was bigger than just football. We achieved something that will last for years. If you knew Patrick was playing, you knew that no matter what, I don't think you would leave the ground dissatisfied. He was a warrior. He was a leader on the pitch. The one word I would use is imperious. I think he had, uh, Patrick was important for Arsenal, Arsenal also for the Premier League. For the Premier League. You cannot have another Vieira. As simple as that. We left Senegal when I was seven, eight years old. This age, you are quite really, um, still really naive. So you adapt yourself everywhere really easily. Uh, and of course, we moved for a better opportunity for my brother and myself. Patrick Vieira and his family would eventually settle in his grandfather's homeland of France. And it was in the suburbs of Paris where the teenager's love affair with football began. But I was a big fan of Paris Saint-Germain with uh, Ginola, Valdo, Rai, and the French national team, the Carré Magique. It made me really fell in love with the game. In 1993, Vieira made his professional debut at Cannes. Two years later, after being named France's Rookie of the Year, a young midfielder would make a surprise move to one of the game's greatest clubs. At that time, Milan was the biggest team in Europe, and uh, for young French players, it was no doubt and no question about asking myself if I need to go or not. I really wanted to, um, to take that opportunity to learn from uh, the best players around. You're right, you know, in Italy at the time when Serie A, I think you could say, probably was the best league in the world in terms of the density of players and the, uh, the managers who were there. After just two Serie A appearances in his first season in Italy, Vieira was on the move. He decided to swap Milan for London and join Arsenal in a bid to make the French squad for the 1998 World Cup finals. The decision to, to join Arsenal was based on, uh, on Arsene Wenger because he uh, was a French coach. We spoke and, um, and he had a really good vision about who I was as a player and, um, and uh, where I can get in years to come. When we decided we wanted him as manager, we asked him who would he like to buy, and he said, well, I'd like to bring in, certainly, Patrick Vieira and Remy Gard. Arsenal suddenly signed, out of the blue, before they'd appointed Arsene Wenger, these two French players. The players at Arsenal, when they first walked in, thought, oh, here's this guy, um, Remy Gard, who's played a couple of internationals for France, and there's some kid who's come with him. I seem to remember that at the time, in, in, in England, people were wondering, why are we paying that much for a player nobody has heard of? was hardly played. Starting on the, on the bench, and to be honest, I was um, fascinated by the atmosphere in the stadium. I was looking more around, uh, looking at the fans and them singing and the pressure that they're putting into, into, uh, into the game and, and how passionate they were. 
And then midway through the first half, Ray Parler got injured and it was like, Patrick, warm up, you're on. I came on straight away and I didn't have time to realise that I was on the field, that I was playing already. It was like a genie from a lamp. Patrick Vieira came onto the pitch and everything changed. It was like going from black and white to colour. Everybody inside the stadium knew that they were seeing something unbelievable. By the end of his first season, Vieira had become an instant hit among the Highbury crowd as the club achieved its highest ever Premier League finish of third place. For the man from Senegal, the English game would turn out to be a match made in heaven. The Premier League was, was made for me. Those legs that go on forever were the most incredible weapon where it looked like somebody was nowhere near him. And he, a, a limb would appear and he would just pluck the ball off of an opponent and in, in the same move be rising up from the ground, bringing the ball away and looking for a pass. We used to call him the octopus because he was so tall and he was everywhere. He never misplaced a pass. The passion from the fan, um, the box-to-box -box game, the tackles. Getting the ball back, giving you an assist and a goal. Like going through. He's got that heart, the desire, that hunger. I really felt the love straight away from the fan and really helped me to to give my best in every single game that I played for them. I think Arsene just wanted improvement for 97-98. I don't think people started the season thinking, let's win the league. When Arsene bring Emmanuel Petit over Mars, Anelka, we really went to a different level. I remember when I first came at Arsenal, there were always this song, you know, one nil for Arsenal, boring Arsenal, kick and rush. The speed at which Arsenal played, all of a sudden, boom, 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 the passing was, was exceptional and, and, and very exciting. Arsenal began 97-98 strongly, and by the end of October, Arsene Wenger's side was second. Then came a 3-2 victory over the champions. Man United had been the dominant force in that period in the sort of mid-90s, so... To get a big result against them was, a, was felt symbolic. This is a time where we realised that we could challenge United or any other teams in the Premier League. Vieira missed the next four weeks through injury. By December, the gap between themselves and leaders Manchester United became almost unbridgeable. We had, uh, if I remember, two games in hand. And after the Boxing Day, I think we were 13 points behind Manchester United. When you get such a big gap like this, you think the Premier League is over. But by March, Arsenal had cut the gap to nine points with three games in hand. It was an electric game, electric game. There are moments in, you know, in a, in a fans' life where you think, this is the big one. United at that time as well with Keane, Scholes, Giggs, Beckham, um, all of them were at the peak of the games. I remember how tense the, uh, was that game. The pressure was very high. I think that game uh, showed how solid we were as a team. We managed to, to control that pressure and to, to play the game. I thought, we can see the finishing line and no one's going to catch us. Arsenal suddenly went from strength to strength, adding seven straight league victories to that 1-0 win over United. An eighth versus Everton completed a remarkable turnaround as the Gunners secured their first ever Premier League title. It was a, a lovely sunny day as Highbury were in the year. Um, it was a perfect day to end up the season. We were known as Boring Arsenal. And during this time, we changed that label. We started playing very similar to the Dutch culture of total football. A more attacking, dominating and creative style. Two weeks later, they'd add the FA Cup to complete the club's first domestic double since 1971. And at the heart of their success was perhaps the club's greatest ever midfield pairing. Our partnership um, 
was one of the best. Patrick, you could go to the war with him. The Vieira Petit partnership was a special one. They could fight to the right to play, and then they could play. He were more offensive players, and I was a little bit more defensive. We had a really good uh, understanding on and off the field. I always knew where he was on the pitch. Even when I couldn't see him, I knew that he was in my back, protecting me. And uh, I think he felt the same as well. Both of them are born winners. How often do you see two defensive midfielders with that kind of technique? He really helped me to grow up. He has um, been giving me a really good advice. And, uh, and I think on the field, we were competitive, both of us. Not only did their partnership help Arsenal dominate in 98, it also helped France conquer the world. France at that period was going through a really difficult political period. In the French national team at that period, that was a reflect of the French society, the diversity that we had in our team was, uh, was what France was all about. We had players of Algerian origin, Senegalese like Patrick Vieira, Italian, Argentinian like Trezeguet, or myself with Portuguese Spanish heritage. After all that, we must work hard together. You had everything in the team. You had passion and love for the game. You had personality, physical presence, you had technique, and you had the best player in the world of Zinedine Zidane. Two nil up, and with history beckoning, France weren't finished yet. I can't talk about Petit and Vieira without mentioning the World Cup in 98. For them to combine to score a goal in the final, it was a pivotal moment. Beautiful, and uh, the fact uh, Patrick gave me the ball for that, for me, is not a coincidence. It was meant to be. The headline was Arsenal win the World Cup. To win that World Cup was sending the message to the world why that we can have our differences, but we can achieve something really special together. The following season would fail to live up to the dizzying heights of 98. A dramatic 2-1 defeat in the FA Cup semi-final to Manchester United would spark a disastrous end to the campaign as Vieira and Arsenal ended it empty-handed. Then, a spell of repeated petulance on the pitch from the midfielders saw many, including Vieira, question whether his future remained in England. There were a couple of moments where he would be sent off or picked on, where he did feel a bit like, why is, why is everyone against me? The first few years, I, um, I was trying to control a little bit more my, my emotions and, uh, and try to control myself. But obviously, at time, it was quite really difficult because, uh, because players knew that was one of my weakness. There were times when Arsene Wenger and the club had to make him make sure that he knew how loved he was, uh, how respected he was, and how much everybody wanted him to make sure that he didn't say, well, who needs it? In the end, Vieira decided to stay, because if there was one thing he loved the most, it was a challenge, especially when it came to Manchester United's Roy Keane. No, oh, I think at the time, why just uh, him losing his head like always. <laughs> Both Warriors, both uh, leaders, they compete to win every game. On the field, both of us were quite really competitive. We wanted to win, we were leaders of our team, so we, uh, we went for it. For six years, Arsenal Man United were head-to-head. -head. 
eyeball to eyeball, proper, serious rivals. And if you had to pick two players to symbolise that rival, it would be Keenan Vieira. I remember him battling with Dennis Wise. I remember him battling with uh, David Batty. I remember him battling with Sherwood. But it was always a battle with Patrick Vieira because that's what he wanted. Vieira also wanted more silverware. And he had the opportunity with France, this time at Euro 2000. We get to the final, we knew we were the better team. After the World Cup, could they win the Euros? It was the question everyone asked. With the Italians, we, we know that they didn't need to play well to win games. And of course, when they scored the first goal, it was really difficult for us. But deep into injury time, Sylvan... When David um, takes the volley with his left foot, he scored a goal. We knew it was a golden goal. We knew players' face, the, the relief and the happiness. It was a very strange, <laughs> bizarre sensation. Because when David Trezeguet scored the goal, David Marc Trezeguet it was over. Le but, fini. And then you say, we're champions of Europe. This is why I love football. You can cry and scream, and then the following minute you can jump and 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 laugh. It's it's unbelievable. Who won the double had more quality individual players who were capable of winning games by themselves. Didn't lose a game away from home. We went on a run of sort of, of winning a lot of games in a row. We won the league at Old Trafford. Fantastic! Fantastic! That year also saw the end of an era, as Arsenal's legendary captain Tony Adams retired after 19 years at the club. For Wenger, there was only one man capable of replacing him. It's not easy to, um, to come to a club like Arsenal, who is a big historic club at uh, 19, 20 years old, and uh, a few years later be named captain, where you have David Seaman, Lee Dixon, all these iconic players who played for years for this football club. So I was really proud. A true leader, a true captain. I remember that when it wasn't going well on the pitch, Patrick was there to show with his presence who was the boss. It wasn't really a surprise, no one was like, are you ready for it, or is he going to be the right man? Because he was already the right man. The engine, the heart of the team. Vieira's first season as captain would see him lift his third FA Cup. His second season would turn out to be the pinnacle of his career. There were some unforgettable moments along the way. Because it was Man United, because it was Arsenal, because it was that game, people remember that miss. And that game, I think, was tough, was really difficult, uh, mentally, physically. Uh, but I think that game gave us even more belief and confidence for the rest of the season. The type of guy that you could count on when he was nil-nil, or we were losing one nil, he wanted that ball. But he wanted the ball even more when we were losing. You could see the attitude of every player, both in training and in the matches. I would look at my teammates and know that this side were going to do well. The last night we managed to win the title at uh, Old Trafford and uh, then doing it as well at, um, at Tottenham was... Uh, was a special period. When you win the title at White Hart Lane, the home of your biggest rival, it's a magical moment. When I saw uh, Tariko and some of their players celebrating a draw, at one point I almost, I'm like, I was like, did I actually realize that we need a point? Uh, what are they celebrating here? Yeah, I don't know. So then I was like, I remember I said to Ashley Cole, oh, they didn't want us to celebrate, now we're going to celebrate. Yet there was still more to achieve for the newly crowned and still unbeaten champions.
you know, when you come to the last game, you're just talking in the dressing room and we can do that unbeaten. And of course, when you come to the last game like that at home, you're always scared. She, you say it. What you need to know is that in England, there are no easy matches. They don't exist. Leicester were relegated and uh, Arsenal were champions, so surely it's all very straightforward, isn't it? We were going through the motion in the first half. Then Paul Dikov scored. After going in at the break, 1-0 down, Wenger's team equalised early in the second half and then upstepped their captain. I remember Dennis Bergkamp got the ball in midfield, passed the ball beautifully as only he can do, straight through, and Patrick made a wonderful run. And I saw Ian Walker coming towards him with his left foot. He went round him with his right foot, put the ball coolly into the net and then let the party begin. And Vieira, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, Vieira. To finish it with the skip, I think it was the best thing that, uh, that, that could have happened. You need players who motivate you. You need leaders. And I remember during that season, Patrick Vieira was very important. If you don't have guys like that, if you don't have guys that are willing to do a bit more, not a bit, a lot more, than what they're supposed to do, you're not going to achieve that. As simple as that. Our strength that period was to have a really positive mining. We were going, we want to win the game. We had this kind of uh, spirit at the time where we had a feeling that we were stronger than anybody else. At the start of the next campaign, Vieira helped the Invincibles stretch their unbeaten league run to 49, a top flight record. And with his last kick in a red and white shirt, he'd win his fourth FA Cup. Arsenal will always have, uh, gonna have the, a big part in my heart. This is the club where I express and I play my best football. This is the club where I grew up as a person. And, um, and I'm always gonna love this club. The young players was coming and, uh, and I didn't want it to do the uh, the, the extra years where, where it will be one year too many. So that is the reason why I decide to leave the club and go to Juventus. Yet Vieira's time with the old lady didn't go according to plan. The club was stripped of their 2006 title and relegated after being found guilty of match fixing. I signed for four years, I just stayed for a year because of the scandal. The club was retrogated in, um, in Serie B. And, um, and I didn't see myself playing in the Serie B at the age where I was. So then I decided to, uh, to go to, uh, to Inter uh, with uh, Roberto Mancini. His second spell in Milan turned out to be more successful as Vieira added three Serie A titles during his time at Inter. He'd also fulfill a lifelong dream of captaining France before retiring at the age of 35 in 2011. At his best, Patrick Vieira was a relentless, determined player who helped revolutionise a football club. But most of all, he was a leader, an invincible, a World Cup winner. The human being is, as I would say, better than the football player. And that is a statement right there because he was a hell of a player. I'm not sure I've seen an ex-Patrick Vieira yet. He's a tough act to follow. Those are big boots. I've always said that if I could be a footballer again, I'd like to be Patrick Vieira. For Arsene Wenger, he was very important. Because he was the captain. Because he was the heart of the team. I said, Arsene, I'm going to make a speech to Patrick, a tribute to Patrick. What should I say? He said, uh, well, simply say he was one of the best players in the world and sit down. <laughs> I just hope that when people talking about myself, they will say he was a player who loved the game, he was a player who always put the team first before himself. He was a player who showed a little desire and uh, competitiveness. He's somebody who always 
Give is best. 